This is a multi-part series talking about earthquakes. Uh, the first part is on earthquake faults. Then we'll be talking about hazards, risk management, and then laws and grants. I'm Yumei Wong. I work for the State Department of Geology. And here we'll be talking about earthquake faults. For years, for centuries in the past, uh, the origin of earthquakes remained a real mystery. Uh, the Japanese, for example, thought that giant catfish lived under the earth, and when they moved, they would create earthquakes. In the late 60s, we learned a lot more about the, the, the origin of earthquakes and their relationship to plate tectonics. The earth is made up of uh, many large plates, and at the boundaries of the plates is a concentration of earthquakes. Here in the Pacific Northwest, we have an oceanic plate called the Juan de Fuca plate that is being shoved under the North American plate. Um, we have geologic records of 40 large Cascadia earthquakes on this fault called the Cascadia Fault, with the last one being about a magnitude 9 on January 26, 1700. If we look at this in cross-section, we actually have multiple earthquake sources in Oregon, not just the subduction zone earthquake on the between the two plates, the Cascadia Fault, but also earthquakes um, in the subducting slab. They can occur very deep. A couple of examples of these are the uh, 2001 Nisqually earthquake and uh, earthquakes in Washington in 1949 and 65. Uh, we can also have crustal earthquakes that occur in the upper North American plate, uh, the Scotts Mills earthquake in 1993, as well as the Klamath Falls earthquakes are examples of those. So again, a cross section, but this one simplified, showing the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, the fault actually um, projects up to the west side where you see the line, but it dips down beneath the Earth's surface. And uh, some examples of crustal faults uh, around our city centers. Um, and again, as the same Cascadia fault, you can see it's not actually a line, but actually a plane. And these can generate the largest magnitude earthquakes that we've seen. Um, there's lots of geologic evidence for these past earthquakes. And this is just one example along the coast. There are areas where you can see ghost forests, where the trees were actually living right before the earthquake, during the earthquake. Uh, the, some of the coastal area actually drops down or subsides. The trees are drowned, and then they die. Um, and then uh, they, they end up um, getting slowly pushed back up in between earthquakes. And you can see dead stumps sticking out. Another similar line of evidence is tsunami sands. Um, the low-lying coastal area actually drops down. The tsunami comes in. Um, leaves a deposit of sand um, and slowly over decades uh, builds up with marsh soils and we can see evidence of this. This is a cross section of what it looks like um, in the field. You can see a fire pit from uh, Native American communities, the tsunami sand on top of that and tidal muds that have developed and accumulated uh, over, over the decades afterwards. And this is actually from the 1700 Cascadia earthquake. Up and down the coastline where you see the dots is where we have evidence. And you can see the rupture zone um, of the last earthquake was, was projected to be quite large, about 1,000 kilometers long. And we don't just have evidence of the last uh, subduction zone earthquake, but we can look back in time in the geologic record. And this cross section here shows seven past earthquakes. Um, And a real interesting thing is that we don't have just evidence here, but there are historic records in Japan that indicate that our tsunami that hit us also hit them. This is a model of what the tsunami looked like. Um, first, it hits our coast, and then, it, and then uh, just like throwing a pebble in the, the pond, the, the waves propagate out. And in, in about five hours later, this is where the tsunami has traveled. 10 hours later, you can see that it's hit Japan. And 18 hours later, hit uh, Alaska, uh, uh, Australia. It's not really a matter of if, uh, when, where, and how big the next Cascadia earthquake is going to be. 
We don't have the scientific knowledge to predict exactly when, but we do know that Oregon is in a region where we are uh, hit by these big earthquakes and that they will continue to happen. One of the big questions that scientists are working on, uh, and they don't, uh, uh, we don't know um, what will be the next earthquake, is whether it will be one large earthquake, like a dinner sausage, or a series of smaller earthquakes. We call them breakfast links here. Now, this new knowledge on seismic hazards um, is one of the reasons why Oregon is unprepared for these large earthquakes. Uh, we had decades of inadequate building codes. And in fact, a prominent geologist in 1983 said that we think the earthquake risk in Oregon is very low. And this was a few years after the Mount St. Helens eruption. If you look at these maps, the map on the left shows very few faults um, in, in, the, in the Oregon area. Uh, and then in 2004, you can see that uh, there are a lot more known faults in this area. And we certainly don't know them all. Um, we are still looking for additional faults. And uh, we will definitely find more. Here's the Cascadia subduction zone, as well as a lot of faults um, throughout the state. In 1976, the building code was um, basically, it reflected that our knowledge that we thought that at that time, uh, earthquake hazards were not an issue in Oregon. You can see that Oregon is gray versus in 1994. The building code map looks very different and reflects um, the, the need for designing for seismic hazards. And finally, um, this is a map of, of expected ground shaking in Oregon, with the red colors on the west indicating higher levels of ground motion, and the uh, blues on the right indicating less ground, lesser ground motion. You can see in the upper right that, there, that Oregon has a fairly high seismic hazard if you consider this from a national perspective. The take home message is that everyone in Oregon has seismic hazards. Thanks.